Hi viewers, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're doing uh, part two of electrical rip out. I'm gonna show you what you do to uh, kind of make the uh, outlets and switch out outlet boxes, switch boxes, etc., uh, ready for drywall basically, and ready to uh, to accept uh, whatever device you're putting into them uh, once the drywall and everything's done. So rapidly approaching finish out, which is nice. Um, so I forgot to talk about outlets first. Um, you basically have two scenarios, more or less, um, as far as that's common. Uh, there's some other oddballs, but uh, here's a case where you've got power coming into an outlet and power going out of an outlet, right? So you're just daisy chaining power along. And so how that works for the wiring, and let me kind of pull this out and I'll show you. I'm doing this live. So kind of what I've done and what this kind of looks like is you basically have your two hots, your two neutrals, and your two grounds, right? So the way you make this up is you start by stripping all the sheathing off of the Romex. And you can see kind of what I did there. Basically cut that sheathing off and pull the outer jacket off. You have to leave at least a quarter inch of the Romex exposed in the box before you cut the sheathing off. And so you cut the sheathing off. Um, there's basically sheathing, a layer of paper, and then the wires and the ground wire has another layer of paper around it. So you rip all that off and then off of your sheathing, remember the tag you made so you know where this wire is going, um, cut that off, right? And you put it on the hot. Um, you could put it on the hot and the neutral too if you wanted. I just did the hot just because these are all on the same circuit. So I really don't care about the neutrals as much because they're all just getting tied together. Uh, so, once you do that, you basically cut them all the same length. You know, any excess that you have, all right? Just cut, them, cut everything to the same length, uh, which I believe uh, minimum is six inches of wire sticking out of the box. When I measured it, it was about basically with my hand butted up against the box, my thumb sticking out about as far as I could. That was about the mark I was shooting for. So, you know, these are kind of bent up, so it's not perfect, right? But you get the idea. So that's what I used rather than trying to measure each one, just so I was kind of consistent. And so now you're left with all these bare wires. Okay, so now we need to hook up an outlet. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can pigtail everything and where it would just give you one hot, one neutral, and one ground to connect to your outlet. Right, or you can utilize the terminals on the side of the outlet to 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 daisy chain, right, to where you have power going in and power going out. For the outlets, for the common outlets, that's what I chose to do, mainly out of sheer convenience and time. Uh, it's one less thing I had to pigtail, and I could just get the, that work done faster. Um, the downside to doing that is if the outlet fails, then it could kill power to everything downstream versus just failing at that one spot. So uh, pros and cons to both. You do it how you want to do it. This is how I did it. Um, so for a normal outlet, right, you got, what, um, hot, you know, on each side, neutrals on each side, and then you have one slot for a ground. So there's where we actually have to do a pigtail um, for this. All right, so we got our two ground wires coming in. We connect them together, and then we have what's called a pigtail, just another piece of wire that all these are connected together. So that gives you one wire that you actually can connect to your device. As far as connections go, I chose to use these uh, ideal insure push-in connectors versus wire nuts. Um, again, because of time, uh, these aren't that expensive. And I was able to do this so much faster than if I, you know, took the wires, twisted them up with my, you know, my Lyman's pliers, then put the wire nut on. I, this is faster. It saves my wrists and all the twisting. So I really liked it. Uh, so highly recommend. Um, the only downside, and you'll see this in the uh, switches, uh, is locally I can get basically two slot, three slot, and four slot. And that does well for a lot of things, but there are a lot of cases where you need five, six, seven, eight slots. And so you have to daisy chain all these together, and it gets kind of crazy. You'd have to do the same with wire nuts but uh, as well. So, I mean, I guess you have to deal with it no matter what. But if I could have got the seven port or eight port uh, of these, it would have made the job a lot cleaner. But they were also, uh, where I could find them, they were really expensive. And so, not worth it. 
So anyway, that is how you do an outlet. So at, when you're done, all this gets pushed back in the box, right? And you've got five wires, right? Two hots, two neutrals, and a ground. Uh, the other scenario is, sorry for the camera, panning, panning, is an outlet at the end of the line, right? Where you just have your three wires, hot, neutral, and ground. And you, all you do, connect those to the outlet. You know, cut them back, cut them the length, fold them back in the box. Nice and neat. Pretty easy. Uh, the other, let's see here. That's pretty much it for outlets. You'll have cases like here. See, I've got three uh, wires going to that box. So in that case, what you do, you just pigtail it. Uh, just like you do the grounds, you just do that for all the wires. And so you connect all the all the hots together, all the neutrals together, all the grounds together, and leave yourself one hot neutral ground coming out. And you connect that to your outlet. So, of course, the other thing we have to talk about is switches. And we can start with a simple switch here. Is this simple? Yes, this is simple. This is just like a closet switch. So let me pull this out and show you this mess. And again, I am not a professional. This is not my cleanest work, um, but it is gonna work. It is to code as far as I can tell. So it's safe, etc. So wiring a switch. Switches, you really gotta pay attention because um, you've got power in and you've got switch legs and all kinds of crazy stuff. So same procedure for stripping the wires, cutting them the length, saving your tags, etc. What you're typically going to have in a switch box is you're going to have probably some power coming in, probably some power going out, and then the switch leg for your device, whether that be straight up to the light or it may be uh, going to a, another like three-way switch or something like that. So uh, we'll talk about this one. This is just a simple switch going to a light. So in this case, we take our grounds. We pigtail them just like we did. In this case, I had three grounds coming in, right? So I used a, one of these four slaughters and have a ground pigtail coming off. That's a little short. I was really hurting for wire for a time, and so some of my pigtails are shorter than they should be, but it's my house. I'm going to live with it, and I can always fix it later if I really care. So you basically leave a ground coming out, all right, to ground the device, and this is for one switch. So if we had two switches and a double box, we'd have two of these, three, three, et cetera. And I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, for the neutrals, you just tie all the neutrals together. Unless you've got some sort of smart switches that require a neutral, out of scope for this video, I'll have some smart switches in the house and I can show kind of how they're wired later. But normal switches, you just tie all the neutrals together. So in this case, three neutrals coming in, three port, um, you know, wire uh, nut connector, it's done. And then you just push them back in the box. Then we've got power. So in this case, I've got two power wires coming in. One coming in, one going out, right? I think this one's coming in from like the entryway and the other one's going out to feed the office behind me. And then we just leave ourselves a power pigtail, right? To feed our switch. And we push all that back. And at the end of the day, we've got our ground. We've got our power going into our switch. And then up here, our lone wire going to our actual light, all right? Well, does it say light? Probably said light light see that's why we have labels so that has a simple switch that's all there is to it um kind of going up in the level of complexity here is a three-way switch and it's basically the same thing except you've got power coming in right to your three-way switch and then you've got your two travels going out to the other three-way switch wherever that is and this in my case this is at the bottom of the stairs, so this goes to the top of the stairs. And at the top of the stairs, this box will look similar, except instead of power coming in and travelers, we will have the travelers from downstairs and then power to the light. That's how three ways are wired, essentially. Um, and now I guess I'll show you the, the craziest switch in the house. And this one took me a while to get right, and I'm still, I'm 98% sure I have it right. That's a four gang. That has two four ways, one three way, and one regular uh, switch in it. 
It has two different circuits in it. So power feeds from two different circuits. And so in that case, you got to keep those neutrals separate. If you've got power coming in from multiple boxes, you cannot mix the neutrals. You definitely want to mix the grounds. Always tie the grounds together across circuits, across everything. Tie them all together always. But the neutrals, because everything is arc faulted now with lighting and almost everything, uh, you got to keep the neutrals separate on circuit on these circuits. Otherwise, you will have you will have nuisance trips on your breaker all the time, and you'll hate life. Don't do that. Keep your neutrals separate. So this is a hot mess, as you can see. I am I proud of how this looks? No. But it, there's a lot going on here, and it, it's my first day. Give me a break. But it will work, um, and it is wired correctly. And so there's just a lot of going on here, right? As I said, this is how complex it can get. I'm sure it can get even more complex. Um, but this is probably the, the good sample of, at least in this house, this is the hard one, or the hardest. Because I've got, uh, like I said, two circuits coming in. Two four ways, one three way, and um, and just one normal switch. So um, if you want to know about four ways and how they work, I just honestly search YouTube. There are videos way better than this one on explaining how they actually work. Uh, but essentially, similar to how a three way works, you can put in number of four ways, however many four ways you want, in the middle of those three way switches, and you can control the lights from any number of points. They just basically take Traveler in and Traveler out. And, and they just kind of go in line. Um, that's a horrible explanation. Look up on YouTube for a better one than, than I can give you. There are much better videos. Uh, Electrician you, other people, etc. So there's that. I um, guess uh, another thing to kind of show you a cool, uh, a cool thing that we did in the master. So this switch box is kind of a hybrid. So we've got an outlet here, right? This is for a bathroom circuit for my vanity. And then here we've got, it's basically wired like a switch, all right? But I'm gonna have a motion sensor wired up here. And that is for that bathroom vent. So as a part of this rip out, we're wiring up all the lights. Um, and I pretty much wired up every light that wasn't one of these can lights. Um, so there's a vanity light. Right there, vanity light there, vanity light there. All right, we're just wiring all the lights. And for the lights, you pretty much, you know, strip the wires back, fold them in the box, and then you'll connect them later when you connect the light. So you also connect your bathroom fans. And this bathroom fan is a little special. It has a light, it has a fan, and it has a night light. A little tiny, like, three-watt nothing, right? That's all LEDs. And so what I decided to do is uh, wire up that night light circuit to a motion sensor. So the idea being, let's say, you know, you get up in the middle of the night, you got to come to the bathroom, whatever. All right. You don't want to flip on the light and blind yourself. It's, just, it's you know, and maybe you don't want to do whatever you need to do in the dark. Right. So you walk in, you get a soft light that automatically comes on and uh, feel a nice little luxury, I think. Um, and in the case where you have the lights full on and the night light, that night light comes on while you're just in the bathroom in the daytime, lights on, whatever, you probably won't even notice or care. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I haven't actually seen it because I don't have power in the house. So, um, the other thing with electric, kind of finalizing before drywall that I'll talk about, <clears throat> is my fun and games up here. So all the highlights in this uh, vault. So you can see I've got six can lights right there, three on each side of those can lights. And then that wire coming down the middle, that is for a fan or a 14.3 for a light fan combo. That was a challenge. Uh, you can see the haphazard decking that's up there that I built to uh, – to get all that, and I did it all from the top rather than the bottom. Um, and uh, thanks to my father who gave me some fall protection uh, gear and harness and whatnot, so I was tied off as well. Uh, so I did it very safely, but uh, still, uh, you know, being up that high, a little nerve wracking. I don't, 
my uh, uh, my comfortableness with heights uh, doesn't go that high. <laughs> I do okay, but that that's high for me. So uh, that was a that was a challenge, but I got it done. Um, similarly, uh, you know, high stuff. You know, getting the uh, fan uh, for the master. You see the wire dangling, and uh, ignore the insulation. We'll talk about insulation later. Um, you see the fan wire kind of hanging down from the center there. Uh, the way I did that, uh, might as well tell you how I did it, is imagine the installation isn't there and you just have two by six rafters. Yeah. So I've got this drywall here ready to go. I put my extension ladder on that drywall, leaned it up into those rafters, and I had those little wide support bars you can get for extension ladders, right? So I wedged it up in there between that roof peak and uh, and the drywall. And then I had my wife kind of monitoring the base of the ladder to make sure it doesn't slide or anything. And that allowed me to have be stable enough to get up there and drill the holes in the joist that I needed to to uh, fish that wire on through and, and, and secure it. Uh, so that was one way to tackle that one. And since I'm talking about extension ladder, there's the extension ladder I used. Just your normal Werner. And then I use this, uh, right, these little stabilizing bars. Uh, come in very handy for those kind of things. Uh, the other booger of a light to get up high was that one uh, in the stairwell there. Uh, very high. So I used the same extension ladder, did not use those stabilizing bars, and I basically wedged the extension ladder up above the window, kind of in those uh, little spirals, uh, spiral joists or whatever you want to call them, and I wedged it right down there on that uh, landing shimmed out with a two by four and that got the angle about perfect and then again with my wife monitoring just in case i fell and you know hurt myself uh i was able to get up there and mount the box and then using some fish tape fish the wire across those joists and up to that switch box up there so um that is really about it for i guess electrical rip out um a lot of repetitiveness. Uh, some of the stuff that I left, uh, we did under cabinet lighting. I just left these kind of dangling out for, uh, you know, to be poking out of the sheetrock behind the cabinets and then we'll, we'll wire them later. Likewise for the range hood, you know, vent hood. Uh, likewise for the, uh, the oven, you know, that's going to be just poking out of the drywall and behind the cabinet. Um, guys, I think that's it. Like I said, I wired up every light except the cans. The cans, I just left the raw Romex lines kind of up above the light. I'll let them drywall, cut the hole, and then I'll pull the lines through and wire them. They have these uh, these little controller boxes for the LEDs, and you can kind of see it up on that high one because I already, I already wired those up. So it's just got a little that's a controller box, probably a little ACDC converter box, I think is all it is. Uh, to take the line power in, and then it gives you a, a little pigtail that you actually hook into the light, which I'm assuming is just carrying DC. Um, so that's it. That's electrical ripout. Um, so we are, at least in that aspect, we're ready for drywall. Uh, a few more videos are coming before that, but we are rapidly approaching, so we're getting there. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.